Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to... It's too bright. How's that? that better? No. Oh. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I got into vet school or how you can get into vet school. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jess and I'm a final year vet student here in New Zealand. I got in on my first try, um, fresh out of high school. I literally just graduated high school, moved up to university and did the pre-selection phase at Massey University. Massey University is the only vet school in the whole of New Zealand. Our system here is obviously very different to um, systems all around the world, but um, I will leave timestamps throughout this video and also lots of links in the description so if you want to just learn about a particular thing like interviews or scenario based testing or whatever go to the timestamp or check out the links in the description of this video but I'm basically gonna go over how I think I got into vet school and hopefully that'll help you get into vet school too I'm gonna start off with grades because most often no matter where you go to vet school you're going to be marked on your grades and you're either going to be let in or not let in because of your grades. Here in New Zealand I think the minimum grade you can have is a B or a B plus. I think it's now a B. Maybe don't quote me on that but that's the minimum grade that you can have. So for me in my first semester of vet school I got three A minuses and one A plus. I got an A plus in chemistry and my A minuses were in biology of anim- sorry lol my camera just can- why have I gone warm all of a sudden? I feel like the camera was cold before? Can't tell you what happened there. Anyway sorry my A minuses were in biology of cells, biology of animals and um, physics. Even if you didn't do very well in, in high school it's a hundred percent possible to do really really well at university if you figure out how you study best. I think I felt a lot of pressure to study exactly the same way everyone else studies. It's 100% down to you and how you study best. So ha what I'm gonna tell you about how I studied is not how you should study if that doesn't appeal to you or if that doesn't work for you. So basically what I did, what I, how I studied is I would study in the morning because I'm a morning person, I know that about myself. I would get up at 6 or even earlier than that and I would study before class and at the end of the day I'd do nothing because my brain didn't need it. I obviously picked up the pace a lot more before an exam and I'd study in the morning and at night before an exam but just generally throughout the semester I studied in the morning. I studied by doing questions, watching videos on the topic like YouTube videos, just any YouTube videos I could find, re-watching lecture, lectures if I had the access to the recorded lecture that is and just drawing pretty pictures. <laughs> so for example, I was really proud of these notes. Um, so I drew it, like, I drew everything. So I drew out my animals for all these notebooks, for physics, chemistry, and biology of animals, I condensed every lecture down to one page. This is after obviously going through the lecture and understanding it. I didn't just condense it down first. And I had like all the lecture notes condensed down to one single page for everything. That really helped me because then I could just flip to a particular page and I have everything there. I did this right before my final exams. I wrote things down and I did questions and I understood everything that I could and that's how I studied. So to summarize, have a routine, figure out how you study best, ask for help. I had a tutor for physics, I met with my chemistry lecturer weekly for help with chemistry. There's no shame in asking for help. If you really want to get in, then do everything you can to get in. Next I'm going to move on to interviews. Um, so for the New Zealand based uh, vet school system we do MMIs which are multiple mini interviews. We do eight interviews in a row. I'm not going to say anything specific and all the information that I'm getting is coming from websites that I found and I'm going to link in the description of this video. I'm just going to tell you how I would take an MMI pretending that I'd never done it before. I'm gonna go step one, step two, step three. Step one being before you go to the interviews, step two being before you get into the interview room, and step three being in the interview. Step one 
is the things that you can do before you even go. Mentally preparing yourself, practicing your communication skills. What type of communicator are you? Are you very confident in yourself or do you need a little bit of help? Practice on your flatmates, practice on your friends, practice on family, have video chats, get them to interview you and quiz you. Get that confidence up before you go because it really helps just being a little bit more confident so that you can communicate your ideas very clearly to the interviewer. Making sure you look presentable, so look business casual even. I wore a white button down blouse, I wore black pants, I wore boots, and I did my hair up kind of similarly like this, and I wore makeup. Back in the day when I did my MMIs, we didn't have to wear face masks because COVID wasn't a thing, but you'll probably have to do that now. What I had on my wall of my hall room, because I was in halls, I had a list of my core values. Having those core values in the back of your mind so that you can feel prepared how to answer questions, for example, teamwork, um, empathy, self-awareness, or dealing with conflict, those sorts of things, just having them in the back of your mind before you go can be really helpful. And along with that, having examples of each of those core values and how they relate to your life. Do you have an example of when you use teamwork really, really well to solve a situation? Do you have an example of empathy in your life? Do you have an example of when you were really self-aware and you reflected and you changed things? Have a list of those, write them down even, just put them in the back of your mind, whatever, before you go into interviews because they might become really helpful and handy. Even if you don't end up describing them to the interviewer, just helping you relate to the scenario that you're given. Step two, when you're outside the interview room. For MMIs, you're given a scenario and you have to relay your thoughts, feelings, opinions about that scenario. Before you get into the interview room, brainstorming is key. You need to identify the key factors involved in that scenario. What in information you maybe would like to know. What is the major problem? Define the problem and have that like somewhere in bold on your little notes and make a decision. You don't have to make one decision, you can make many decisions, but just make sure that you've made them before you enter the room. Because if, you're, if you've got all these ideas and you're stumbling and you're like, oh, blah, 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 I don't know what my, uh, maybe this thing would be a good idea, maybe this would be a good idea, blah, blah, blah. The interviewer can see that you're struggling or that you're confused. So make sure you've made up your mind, define the problem, the factors, the information you'd like to know, and the decisions that you want to make before you enter the interview room. The last step is when you're actually in the interview room with the interviewer in front of you. What you need to do is you need to go through those notes that you made outside the room and describe each step in detail. What were the key factors? What was the problem you identified? What were the decisions that you want to make? And don't waffle on like I normally do. <laughs> Be succinct, succinct, be succinct. Provide examples where necessary. Describe things in terminology that people can relate to you with. Present very clearly. Articulate your words to the interviewer. Be confident in yourself and your ideas. And then end on the most important part. End on what you want the interviewer to remember. If you do all of those things, you should have a successful interview. The other thing to note with MMIs is because there's eight in a row, you do get really exhausted and sometimes you don't know what to do. And sometimes one of the scenarios is really, really hard and you don't know what you're doing. So if that one goes badly, don't let it affect the next one because the interviewer has no idea what you just did. I actually really, really enjoyed my interviews. I had a really good time. And if you like talking to people, then you're gonna like MMIs. I'm gonna link a bunch of things, a bunch of resources in the description of this video. So please go and check them out. If you have any questions, please comment them down below or you can contact me over on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I will see you next time. Thank you.